Well, I hope you guys are doing well tonight. Uh, forgive me for wobbling here. I don't have the tripod. It's easier for me to sit down here at the table with my paper and hold the camera in my hand. We're going to cover shrinkage tonight. We're going to, most of these numbers are pertaining to cast iron patterns. Uh, for you guys that work in only fractions, I would suggest you get a warm place in your heart for working with the decibels. I do it all the time. It's easier for me to do my math with decibels and fractions any day. If you need to convert a fraction to a decibel and you don't have access to a decibel equivalent chart, uh, you can easily divide your numerator by your denominator as this illustration right here shows. One half is equal to 0.5. Right here, cast iron, one inch ten thousandths. Aluminum and bronze, one inch fifteen thousandths. Write those down. If you plan on designing any patterns in the future, you'll need these. I do not use a shrinkage ruler. It's not that I don't want one. I'd love to have the whole set, but I'm not paying that kind of money when I can do this on my calculator. So if you're like me, you'll just recognize these two numbers. Now, the way this works, you just multiply. In this case, as I said, we're working with cast iron shrinkage. So we're going to use this number, one inch ten thousandths. We are going to say these numbers times that, and that will give us our equivalent. But right off the top of our heads, we know that 12 inches is going to be 12.125. That's going to be 6.0625. We're not going to worry about the radius. And the 3 inches is going to be 3 point. And that height of 2 inches, well, looking at it, I wouldn't know what that is if I didn't just tell you that that number right there times 2 inches is going to be 2 inches 20 thousandths. So I changed the numbers up a little bit down here with the same illustration for you to practice with if you want to. 2.375 for an iron casting pattern would come out to be 2.399. 1.875 would come out to be 1.895, and so forth. Now, I scribbled that little triangle in there. That's our draft angle. Now, if your length is critical, you'll want to go ahead and add additional stock. And for 1.895, that would come out to be 99 thousandths additional ledge there just to make sure I don't lose any of this up here. If we are going to have our parting line down here on the bottom, if we're going to have it up here on the top, then our draft angle would be reversed. It would go this way, which would shift it way out here if we don't want to lose that length. And it would also have to come out on all four sides here. Follow me? So, uh, now, now that we've added that additional stock, we've got to keep this in mind. Is this going to get machined? And is this going to get machined? If so, we need to add some additional stock to those machine surfaces, as I did right here. Depending on the size of the casting depends a lot on the boundary of thickness you're going to add. Personally, you can't go wrong with a hundred thousandths. I have had some pretty good sized castings. No matter how well I rise them, I would still get some shrink pockets down in the very center and uh, they, they can easily go as deep as 50,000. So if 100% uh, cleanup is a necessity, then you'll want to make that boundary as thick as you can. Uh, the other issue, if you want to have good sharp corners and at the same time good soft material that's not tearing your cutters up, you will want to put a radius on that border that I just created right there. And I apologize for my focus. I can't get this thing to, I'm not going to do like Ave. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
if you uh, if you incorporate your draft angle ledge along with this, that that would easily double that to two hundred thousandths extra stock on all sides. Okay, so we've covered that. I drew a little illustration here now. Uh, where I drew the line, these three surfaces get machined. This is machined. That's machined. This gets machined. So I added additional material and blended a radius, as you can see. All right. Now, if this is going to be just a cast corner with no machining, you're just going to have a very hard corner. It's not going to be a it's not going to pose any problems as long as you're not having to machine it. If you've got to machine that, then you're, it's a necessity that you blend a radius into some additional stock here. You cannot, under any circumstances, have a sharp internal cast corner. If you do, you're going to have a void here. You're going to have shrinkage pulling that material and sucking it down and you'll have a crater going right down in that corner. That is a stress factor. You do not want that. Always make a well blended fillet for internal corners. So I hope that helps. And uh, in your comments, if there's anything I've left out that you'd like to know, I'll, I'll try to cover that in a future clip. It would make my job a lot easier for you guys to know this. If you're wondering how I determined that that was going to be 99 thousandths overhang on that ledge at 3 degrees off that height, here you go. This is something that I was taught years ago, and to this day I still use it on a daily basis because of a lot of the work that I do during the daytime. Memorize this triangle. Memorize these arrows in their direction. Cosine goes up and down, sine goes straight across, tangent goes diagonally. The triangle is going to always have the known angle down here at the tail. And anything that goes with the arrows is multiplication. Anything that goes against the arrows, you divide. So, in this case, 1.895 is the height of that pattern. So we say 1.895 and we want to know the height or the length of that ledge with a three degree draft angle. So we're going to say 1.895 times three degrees tangent equals 0.0993. If we wanted to know the length of this hypotenuse, and we knew this number, we would say 0 0.0993 divided by 3 degrees sine equals, and there's your hypotenuse. And you can test this on just a 45 degree angle where you know your base and your height are going to be the same with any number. And you will be able to see that it works out every time. That makes it a little easier for you. You machinists who uh, are just getting by, if you do not practice trigonometry, this would save you a lot of time in setups. It'd make your work a lot more efficient. It's just good all around to know this. So anyway, uh, I hope you have a good day. Stay safe, healthy, and I'll talk to you later.